For many generations of Portlanders, building a new fountain has been a rallying point of civic pride for all of us who live in the water-abundant Pacific Northwest. After the pandemic and Portland's Black Lives Matter protests, some national media want to have you believe downtown Portland has been destroyed. It's not true, but few would argue that Portland's city center hasn't seen better days. So how should we begin our comeback? How about turning on downtown Portland's fountains? To encourage their revival, we thought it'd be a good idea to visit some of downtown Portland's fountains and learn about how they came about. Turn on the fountains. Let's get downtown Portland flowing again. Reporting for Village Portland, I'm Jax. Acquired in 2000, Jameson Square was the first park built in the Pearl. It was originally intended to be a gallery, but the water features were added to discourage skateboarders. When it was flowing, the fountain attracted families with small children who waded in the shallow water. The park was named after William Jameson, an art gallery owner and a booster of the Pearl District who died of an AIDS-related illness in 1985. In 1912, philanthropist Simon Benson donated $10,000 to install 20 fountains throughout downtown Portland. It may have been to deter his workers from drinking during the day or because he witnessed a little girl crying at an Independence Day parade because she couldn't find a drink of water. True Benson bubblers have four bowls, according to the Portland Water Bureau. This tubular fountain was installed in 1977 and is informally named the Car Wash. Working at the Car Wash, yeah! This fountain has a wind gauge that shuts off its water on gusty days to prevent pedestrians and motorists from being splashed. Built in 1888 for horses, men and dogs, Skidmore Fountain is considered Portland's oldest piece of art by the city. It was named after Portland druggist Stephen Skidmore and designed based on the fountains he saw at the Palace of Versailles in France. Bill Nato Legacy Fountain. This fountain is at the end of the plaza built for the Portland Saturday Market. Coincidentally, you might get squirted if you try to put a tent up here. Dedicated in 1988, Salmon Street Springs are regulated by a computer and its sprays are called Bollards, Misters, and Wedding Cake. Tom McCall Waterfront Park was created when a highway was removed in 1974, a huge victory for urban revivalists. In 1900, Elk Fountain was built to provide a watering hole and gathering place. Fires set in the troughs during this summer's Black Lives Matter protests weakened the base, so the bronze elk statue was removed. This metal statue soon replaced it. Funded by the Downtown Merchants Improvement District, TriMet, and the United States Department of Transportation, Animals in Pools was installed in 1986 as part of the Max Light Rail renovations. Historians say they are super cute and like to wear knitted sweaters. Teacher's Fountain is located in Director's Park and is dedicated to teachers everywhere. This big stone ball represents what teachers have taught throughout the years. Its strength is solid.
O'Brien Square is named after Hugh O'Brien, Portland's first mayor. It was also called Paranoid Park or Needle Park by scared urbanites. In March 2018, the park was closed indefinitely by the city due to safety concerns relating to the parking garage underneath it. Opened in 1970, Keller Fountain was inspired by the waterfalls in the Columbia River Gorge east of Portland. It was dedicated days after a violent clash between police and anti-Vietnam War protesters. Hundreds of youth gathered at the top for the ceremony, but the Oregonian claimed tensions dissolved when the fountain's 13,000 gallon a minute flow turned on and officials and youth all jumped into the water together. Nice. Designed by a professor at the Pacific Northwest College of Art, the creator said that his sculpture, The Dreamer, speaks of hope, of beauty, and serenity, of love, and for a better life in our midst. He filled the sculpture with foam that made falling rain sound more gentle to passersby. What was called a scrape and build urban renewal project in a history of one of the resulting apartment towers, the 55 block project was the first from the city's newly established development commission. In the 1950s, 1,500 residents were relocated due to the project when their buildings were condemned for the redevelopment. Led by architect Lawrence Halperin through the 60s and 70s, the project was anchored by four sublime nodes stretching from what is now Keller Fountain to Pettigrove Park, Lovejoy Park, and finally the Source Fountain. Lovejoy Fountain Completed in 1966, the park was the first of the Halpern sequence as it's now known. In 2018, the Halpern Landscape Conservancy partnered with the city to restore these amazing, world-renowned parks. The same coin that Mr. Lovejoy and Mr. Pettigrove used to decide in 1845 whether our city would be called Portland or Boston was also flipped to determine which park would be Lovejoy and which would be Pettigrove. With no water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Source Fountain was meant to evoke a stream's origin, and here's where we end our tour. Portland has always turned off the fountains in cold weather months, but wouldn't it be nice to have a fall of flowing fountains? I know I would. This is Jax. We are here at the Source Fountain, where there is not a drop in sight, but an acorn at the bottom. Very sad. Will they turn on the fountains in Portland soon? We're all wondering. The pandemic ends soon. Till then, we just stay happy and do what we can around the barren fountains. <laughs> Thank you. This is Jax reporting from Village Portland. Signing off.